7th edition cover by Sam Lamont, 2014 Call of Cthulhu is a horror fiction role-playing game based on H.P. Lovecraft's story of the same name and the associated Cthulhu mythos. The game, often abbreviated as COC, is published by Chaosium. It was first released in 1981 and is in its 7th edition, with licensed foreign language editions available as well. Its game system is based on Chaosium's basic role-playing with additions for the horror genre. These include special rules for sanity and luck. Call of Cthulhu is set in a darker version of our world based on H.P. Lovecraft's observation that the oldest and strongest emotion of mankind is fear. And the strongest kind of fear is fear of the unknown. The original edition, first published in 1981, uses basic role-playing as its basis and is set in the 1920s, the setting of many of Lovecraft's stories. The Cthulhu by Gaslight supplement blends the occult and Holmesian mystery and is mostly set in England during the 1890s. Cthulhu Now and Delta Green are set in a modern 1980s era and deal with conspiracies. Recent settings include 1000 AD, the 23rd century and ancient Rome. The protagonist may also travel to places that are not of this earth, such as the dreamlands, other planets, or the voids of space. In keeping with the Lovecraftian theme, the game master is called the Keeper of Arcane Lore, while player characters are called Investigators of the Unknown. While predominantly focused on Lovecraftian fiction and horror, playing in the Cthulhu mythos is not required. The system also includes ideas for non-Lovecraft games, such as using folk horror or the settings of other authors and horror movies, or with entirely custom settings and creatures by the game master and or players. Cock uses the basic role-playing system first developed for Rune Quest and used in other Chaosium games. It is skill-based, with player characters getting better with their skills by succeeding at using them for as long as they stay functionally healthy and sane. They do not, however, gain hit points and do not become significantly harder to kill. The game does not use levels. Cock uses percentile dice to determine success or failure. Every player statistic is intended to be compatible with the notion that there is a probability of success for a particular action given what the player is capable of doing. For example, an artist may have a 75% chance of being able to draw something, and thus rolling a number under 75 would yield a success. Rolling one-fifth or less of the skill level would be a special success and would yield some extra bonus to be determined by the keeper. For example, the artist character might draw especially well or especially fast, or catch some unapparent detail in the drawing. The players take the roles of ordinary people drawn into the realm of the mysterious, detectives, criminals, scholars, artists, war veterans, etc. Often, happenings begin innocently enough, until more and more of the workings behind the scenes are revealed. As the characters learn more of the true horrors of the world and the irrelevance of humanity, their sanity inevitably withers away. The game includes a mechanism for determining how damaged a character's sanity is at any given point, and countering the horrific beings usually triggers a loss of sand points. To gain the tools they need to defeat the horrors, mystic knowledge and magic, the characters may end up losing some of their sanity, though other means such as pure firepower or simply outsmarting one's opponents also exist. Cock has a reputation as a game in which it is quite common for a player character to die in gruesome circumstances or end up in a mental institution. Eventual triumph of the players is not guaranteed. The original conception of Call of Cthulhu was Dark Worlds, a game commissioned by the publisher Chaosium but never published. Sandy Peterson contacted them regarding writing a supplement for their popular fantasy game Rune Quest set in Lovecraft's Dreamlands. He took over the writing of Call of Cthulhu, and the game was released in 1981. Peterson oversaw the first four editions with only minor changes to the system. Once he left, Development was continued by Lynn Willis, who was credited as co-author in the 5th and 6th editions. After the death of Willis, Mike Mason became Call of Cthulhu line editor in 2013, continuing its development with Paul Fricker. Together they made the most significant rules alterations than in any previous edition, culminating in the release of the 7th edition in 2014. For those grounded in the RPG tradition, the very first release of Call of Cthulhu created a brand new framework for tabletop gaming. Rather than the traditional format established by Dungeons & Dragons, which often involved the characters wandering through caves or tunnels and fighting different types of monsters, Sandy Peterson introduced the concept of the onion skin, interlocking layers of information and nested clues that lead the player characters from seemingly minor investigations into a missing person to discovering mind-numbingly awful global conspiracies to destroy the world. 
Unlike its predecessor games, Cock assumed that most investigators would not survive, alive or sane, and that the only safe way to deal with the vast majority of nasty things described in the ruled books was to run away. A well-run Cock campaign should engender a sense of foreboding and inevitable doom in its players. The style and setting of the game, in a relatively modern time period, created an emphasis on real-life settings, character research, and thinking one's way around trouble. The first book of Call of Cthulhu Adventures was Shadows of Yogsathoth. In this work, the characters come upon a secret society's foul plot to destroy mankind, and pursue it first near to home and then in a series of exotic locations. This template was to be followed in many subsequent campaigns, including Fungi from Yugoth, Spawn of Azathoth, and possibly the most highly acclaimed, Masks of Nyarlathotep. Shadows of Yogg Sothoth is important not only because it represents the first published edition to the boxed first edition of Call of Cthulhu, but because its format defined a new way of approaching a campaign of linked RPG scenarios involving actual clues for the would-be detectives amongst the players to follow and link in order to uncover the dastardly plots afoot. Its format has been used by every other campaign-length Call of Cthulhu publication. The standard of cock scenarios was well received by independent reviewers. The Asylum and Other Tales, a series of standalone articles released in 1983, rated an overall 9 tenths in issue 47 of White Dwarf magazine. The standard of the included clue material varies from scenario to scenario, but reached its zenith in the original boxed versions of the masks of Nair Lathotep and Horror on the Orient Express campaigns. Inside these one could find matchbooks and business cards apparently defaced by non-player characters, newspaper cuttings and period passports to which players could attach their photographs. Increasing the sense of immersion. Indeed, during the period that these supplements were produced, third-party campaign publishers strove to emulate the quality of the additional materials, often offering separately priced deluxe clue packages for their campaigns. Additional milieu were provided by Chaosium with the release of Dreamlands, a boxed supplement containing additional rules needed for playing within the Lovecraft Dreamlands. A large map in a scenario booklet, and Cthulhu by Gaslight, another boxed set which moved the action from the 1920s to the 1890s. In 1987, Chaosium issued the supplement titled Cthulhu Now, a collection of rules, supplemental source materials and scenarios for playing Call of Cthulhu in the present day. This proved to be a very popular alternative milieu, so much so that much of the supplemental material is now included in the core rule book. Lovecraft Country was a line of supplements for Call of Cthulhu released in 1990. These supplements were overseen by Keith Herber and provided backgrounds and adventures set in Lovecraft's fictional towns of Arkham, Kingsport, Innsmouth, Dunwich, and their environs. The intent was to give investigators a common base, as well as to center the action on well-drawn characters with clear motivations. In 1987, Terror Australis, Call of Cthulhu in the Land Down Under was published. In 2018, a revised and updated version of the 1987 game was reissued, with about triple the content and two new games. It requires the Call of Cthulhu Keeper's rulebook and is usable with Pulp Cthulhu. In the years since the collapse of the Mythos collectible card game, the release of cock books has been very sporadic, with up to a year between releases. Chaosium struggled with near bankruptcy for many years before finally starting their upward climb again. 2005 was Chaosium's busiest year for many years, with 10 releases for the game. Chaosium took to marketing monographs short books by individual writers with editing and layout provided out of house, directly to the consumer, allowing the company to gauge market response to possible new works. The range of times and places in which the horrors of the mythos can be encountered was also expanded in late 2005 onward with the addition of Cthulhu Dark Ages by Stafe and Jesper, which gives a framework for playing games set in 11th century Europe. Secrets of Japan by Michael Jasinski for gaming in modern-day Japan, and Secrets of Kenya by David Conyers for gaming in interwar period Africa. In July 2011, Chaosium announced it would re-release a 30th anniversary edition of the Cox 6th edition role-playing game. This 320-page book features thick leatherette hardcovers with the front cover and spine stamped with gold foil. The interior pages are printed in black ink, on 90 GSM matte art paper. The binding is thread-sewn, square-backed. Chaosium offered a one-time printing of this collector's edition. On May 28, 2013, a crowdfunding campaign on Kickstarter for the 7th edition of Call of Cthulhu was launched with a goal of $40,000. It ended on June 29 of the same year having collected $561,836.
It included many more major revisions than any previous edition, and also split the core rules into two books, A Player's Guide and Keeper's Guide. Problems and delays fulfilling the Kickstarters for the 7th edition of Call of Cthulhu led Greg Stafford and Sandy Peterson to return to an active role at Chaosium in June 2015. The available milieu were also expanded with the release of Cthulhu Through the Ages, a supplement containing additional rules needed for playing within the Roman Empire. Mythic Iceland, a futuristic micro-setting, and the end times, where the monsters of the mythos attempt to subjugate or destroy the world. Chaosium has licensed other publishers to create supplements, video, card and board games using the setting and the Call of Cthulhu brand. Many, such as Delta Green by Pagan Publishing and Arkham Horror by Fantasy Flight, have moved away completely from Call of Cthulhu. Other licensees have included Infogrames, Miskatonic River Press, Theater of the Mind Enterprises, Triad Entertainment, Games Workshop, Rayfam, Goodman Games, Grenadier Models Incorporated, and Yogsathoth. Com. These supplements may be set in different time frames or even different game universes from the original game. In February 2008, Pelgrane Press published Trail of Cthulhu, a standalone game created by Kenneth Hite using the Gumshoe system developed by Robin Laws. Gumshoe is specifically designed to be used in investigative games. In September 2008, Reality Deviant Publications published Shadows of Cthulhu, a supplement that brings Lovecraftian gaming to Green Ronin's True 20 system. In October 2009, Reality Blurs published Realms of Cthulhu, a supplement for Pinnacle Entertainment's Savage World system. Pagan Publishing published Delta Green, a series of supplements originally set in the 1990s, although later supplements add support for playing closer to the present day. In these, player characters are agents of a secret agency known as Delta Green, which fights against creatures from the mythos and conspiracies related to them. Arc Dream Publishing released a new version of Delta Green in 2016 as a standalone game, partially using the mechanics from Call of Cthulhu. In 2001, a standalone version of Call of Cthulhu was released by Wizards of the Coast, for the D20 system. Intended to preserve the feeling of the original game, the D20 conversion of the game rules were supposed to make the game more accessible to the large D&D player base. The D20 system also made it possible to use Dungeons and Dragons characters in Call of Cthulhu, as well as to introduce the Cthulhu mythos into Dungeons and Dragons games. The D20 version of the game is no longer supported by Wizards as per their contract with Chaosium. Chaosium included D20 stats as an appendix in three releases, but have since dropped the dual stat idea. Mythos was a collectible card game based on the Cthulhu mythos that Chaosium produced and marketed during the mid-1990s. While generally praised for its fast gameplay and unique mechanics, it ultimately failed to gain a very large market presence. It bears mention because its eventual failure brought the company to hard times that affected its ability to produce material for Call of Cthulhu. Call of Cthulhu, the card game is a second collectible card game, produced by Fantasy Flight Games. The first licensed Call of Cthulhu 25mm gaming miniatures were sculpted by Andrew Chernak and released by Grenadier Models in boxed sets and blister packs in 1983. The license was later transferred to Rafen. As of 2011, Rafen still produced licensed Call of Cthulhu models sculpted by Bob Merch. Both lines include investigator player character models and the iconic monsters of the Cthulhu mythos. As of July 2015, Reaper Miniatures started its third Bones Kickstarter, a Kickstarter intended to help the company migrate some miniatures from metal to plastic, and introducing some new ones. Among the stretch goals was the second $50 expansion, devoted to the mythos, with miniatures such as cultists, Deep Ones, Migo, and an extra $15 Shub Nigaroth miniature. It is expected for those miniatures to remain in the Reaper Miniatures catalog after the Kickstarter project finishes. In 2020 Chaosium announced a license agreement with Audacious for Call of Cthulhu Virtual Miniatures to be released on their augmented reality app Arden Roleplay. Shadow of the Comet Shadow of the Comet is an adventure game developed and released by Infogrames in 1993. The game is based on H.P. Lovecraft's Cthulhu Mythos and uses many elements from Lovecraft's The Dunwich Horror and The Shadow over Innsmouth. A follow-up game, Prisoner of Ice, is not a direct sequel. Prisoner of Ice Prisoner of Ice is an adventure game developed and released by Infogrames for the PC and Macintosh computers in 1995 in America and Europe. It is based on H.P. Lovecraft's Cthulhu Mythos, particularly at the Mountains of Madness, and is a follow-up to Infogrames' earlier Shadow of the Comet. In 1997, 
the game was ported to the Sega Saturn and PlayStation exclusively in Japan. Dark Corners of the Earth a licensed first-person shooter adventure game by Head First Productions, based on Call of Cthulhu campaign Escape from Innsmouth and released by Bethesda Softworks in 2005-2006 for the PC and Xbox. The Wasted Land in April 2011, Chaosium and new developer Red Wasp Design announced a joint project to produce a mobile video game based on the Call of Cthulhu RPG, entitled Call of Cthulhu, The Wasted Land. The game was released on January 30, 2012. Cthulhu Chronicles in 2018, Meat Arcade produced Cthulhu Chronicles, a game for iOS with a campaign of nine mobile interactive fiction stories set in 1920s England based on Call of Cthulhu. The first five stories were released on July 10, 2018. Call of Cthulhu Call of Cthulhu is a survival horror role-playing video game developed by Cyanide and published by Focus Home Interactive for PlayStation 4, Xbox One and Windows. The game features a semi-open world environment and incorporates themes of Lovecraftian and psychological horror into a story which includes elements of investigation and stealth. It is inspired by H.P. Lovecraft's short story The Call of Cthulhu. Several reviews of various editions appeared in Space Gamer slash Fantasy Gamer. Several reviews of various editions appeared in White Dwarf. Several reviews of various editions and supplements also appeared in Dragon. In a 1996 reader poll by Arcane Magazine to determine the 50 most popular role-playing games of all time, Call of Cthulhu was ranked first. Editor Paul Pettingale commented, Call of Cthulhu is fully deserved of the title as the most popular role-playing system ever, it's a game that doesn't age, is eminently playable, and which hangs together perfectly. The system, even though it's over 10 years old, it's still one of the very best you'll find in any role-playing game. Also, there's not a referee in the land who could say they've read every Lovecraft-inspired book or story going, so there's a pretty well endless supply of scenario ideas. It's simply marvelous. The game has won several major awards. Thanks for watching.